Hello, my name is Phil Henderson. I'm a customer success engineer at Buoyant, um, creators of Linkerd. Today I'm going to talk about adding federated services to Linkerd and the design considerations and debates that went into it. Again, my name is Phil Henderson, customer success engineer. There's my face, same one that's on me now. Um, you can find me on GitHub or Slack. I don't have any social media besides LinkedIn, and there's probably more people in this room right now than I have on LinkedIn, so feel free to find me and add me. Um, but we'll go on that. Who's, who here is familiar with Linkerd? Okay, a good handful. For those who aren't, I'm going to give you a quick little lesson in it. Linkerd is the world's fastest service mesh that brings security, reliability, and observability to your applications. In that order, no exceptions. It's an ultralight, simple, secure, uh, purpose-built proxy, which is different than other ones. Um, Linkerd puts Simplicity and security first, it just works. So there's zero, con zero changes you need to make on your applications. Um, it's simple and it's ultra light. And I'm gonna keep saying that and it's very important, especially at this KubeCon when AI and ML is a big topic. So keep that in mind, ultra light. And you can see even the little footprints down there at the bottom. Um, right now with multi-cluster and Linkerd, we bring we make it a little bit more resilient, scalable, and we have effective workload isolation. Who here is already using multi-cluster setups with their, uh, their Kubernetes clusters and services? Anyone? Some? Okay. Who are you know trying to mirror those services into other clusters so they can span their things? Okay. So right now in Linkerd, it's pretty easy to do. You can do it with the HTTP routes. We have things mirroring from one cluster to the next. And it has the same built-in security and reliability that Linkerd has inherently. Um, but with this, there's some scalability considerations that you need to you know, consider. If you've used HTTP routes before, you know that there's some, some things to it where if you don't have a service available, it's gonna start throwing some 500s, which you don't want your application to do that. And when you start spanning more than one cluster and start, you know, in my, my example here is just another one, but when you start pinning you know, half a dozen, dozen clusters together, having these HTTP routes can be a little bit more complex than you really want. So with federated services, we're gonna be able to bring that all into one single service like you call your services now today in a cluster to where you can call service, app, service, fe federated, and it already goes to all your clusters without even thinking about it, without having to make HTTP routes, changing them, whatever. Some of the design considerations that we went into it was how people are using their multi-cluster architectural right now. So there's, there's numerous ways people are doing it now, whether it's uh, having their service per cluster, having more of a cell architecture, or an iterative approach where you know you just kind of grown as you're, you're, you're needed in your, in your company. Um, other design considerations, the same operational ease, security, and lightweight that we've had with Linkerd from day one, making it simple, secure, and easy to use. Debates, like in everything in IT, the name is, is one thing that was debated. Was it, was something used too much? Was the acronym too, you know, not make sense? Was it straightforward? We went through cluster agnostic services. We went through cluster ensemble services. We went through global services. We went through federated unified cluster services, but that acronym didn't really sound great when your clusters gave none of those. Um, so we landed on federated services because it just made sense. It was simple. And with that, that's, you know, the quick little talk about federated services, but there's 10 more linker detox going on this week. So get your phones out, scan that QR code, add them to your schedule. A lot of them are very interesting. Um, one I'm really interested about is that 1210 about ML and AI. Again, that ultra lightweight thing that I was talking about is going to be a lot more important nowadays than it was in the past. Give a brief pause for those people grabbing the QR codes. I see one gentleman, I don't wanna, okay. And now, as well, we're gonna be at the project billing tomorrow, so if there's any of these little words that sound interesting or if you wanna try and just come talk to me, I love talking to people. I'm a very personable person, even though I don't have social media. Uh, and if you want one of these cool T-shirts, you'll have to work for it a little bit. We have some wooden tokens that are gonna be hidden around uh, tomorrow that you're gonna have to find to, to trade them in. They both have uh, Linky and Ferris, if you're not familiar with the mascots of Linkerd or the Rust project, you know, you can get a t-shirt to uh, have them both on there. And again, thank you, uh, that's all I have, quick talk. Uh, if you don't mind, scanning the QR code, give me a little feedback. This is my first KubeCon and my first Cube Talk. so uh, any appreciation would be, or any comments would be appreciated, thank you.